It's Friday night and all across America, all too many parents are holding their breaths on the football sidelines. This concern rapidly intensifies over the long-term effects of taking hits to the head on the field. Can new helmet technology and new coaching tips lessen the impact of those violent hits? Here's ABC's Ryan Smith. When Jordan Dalton's school day ends, he has one thing on his mind. Football. Dalton, number 71 for the Northwood High School Chargers, is a senior on the varsity team. George that, Dalton. Identified as a high-risk player. High risk for concussions because of those hard hits on the field. But it's those hits on the field that worry his mom, Cara. When I see Jordan get hit, I'm usually thinking about how hard was that hit? Is that hit going to turn into a concussion? Was it hard enough for a concussion? That's the part that I don't really know. Across the country, parents like Kara are questioning just how safe the game is. Preoccupied a big hit could land their son in an emergency room or worse. Since July, there have been 11 high school fatalities, seven directly related to a traumatic injury. The most recent? High steps past the tackle and he's going to stumble ahead. He's Luke Shem. Number four in the blue jersey, seen here scoring in a playoff game two weeks ago. After taking a hit in the third quarter and running off the field, Shem collapsed, was flown to a hospital where he died the next day after his family removed him from life support. Our beautiful gift from God is no longer with us. One first and ten, three receivers. And tonight, another high schooler in Southern California still recovering at a medical center four weeks after what appeared to be a routine tackle. Dramatic video showing Josh Nava stumble off the field. Oh, he had a player go down. Needing emergency surgery to stop the bleeding, swelling, and pressure on his brain. Right and he looks like he's in pain. Little is known about how hard Nava was hit, but the helmet he wore contains sensors able to capture that kind of data. But a school official said the device malfunctioned that night. We're all worried about concussions. Um, the long-term effects of multiple concussions or even just one concussion. So is a team of researchers from the University of North Carolina who determined Jordan to be an at-risk player for head injury. Hard hits to his head from early in the season flagging him, turning him into a subject in their three-year study aimed at reducing the risk of concussions and revealing a lot more than Kara knew. I didn't really realize in the beginning that he was the one getting more impacts than anybody else. We just don't know what those impacts mean. We're trying to better understand if we can change the behavior on the field. Dr. Kevin Guskowitz leads the million-dollar CDC-funded study known as BMOD, short for Behavior Modification, which is in its first year. This is game footage uh, of uh, one of the teams in our study, and uh, they all have uh, this uh, system uh, in their helmets. Researchers track in real time the number and strength of hits to players' heads. That data, some of which is shown in this video from the study, reveals who they say may be at risk for concussions. And what's 95G like if you put it in the context of a car? 25 mile an hour. So coaches staged an intervention with Jordan, focusing on drills to help him understand what Guskowitz sees as a safer way to play. Available online in a series of how-to videos. Today we're going to talk about the tackle. It's based on the method of tackling and blocking known as heads-up football, an NFL-funded and promoted program emphasizing players lead with their shoulders when tackling, not with their heads. A recent analysis found that players between the age of 5 and 15 playing on teams adopting the program had a 76% reduction in injuries and a 29% reduction of concussions during games. Jordan works on his form during specific drills at practice and then reviews video of it from previous games. The impact that you took on this play was an example of you know, a 95G hit. My stance is just terrible and I'm way too far down. These guys are used to tackling with all their might, all their force. They don't want to think. How do you get them to just do it in the right so, way? So uh, the message that we're sending is that uh, you've got to play smart today to be able to play later. Guskowitz showed me video of Jordan from early in the season, which he says shows poor form. And what's he doing wrong? Well, you can see he's head to head right there. That's a high impact. And then he compared it to a video a few weeks later under the Friday night lights. Same exact play, but uh, you're going to see he's going to get out in front. You're going to get those arms up a little bit earlier. That impact, that's clearly better technique. Guskowitz is also part of the NFL's head, neck, and spine committee and dismisses scrutiny arising from his NFL connection. You're on an NFL committee. Are you concerned that some people will 
see your results and be dubious of those results? I'm an uh, unpaid uh, consultant. We're strictly advising them uh, about what we see as ways to improve safety in their sport. I'm much more interested in, in trying to make a difference at this youth level. And he's not the only one investigating a way to make the game safer. Eric Swartz, a former rugby player, knows tackles performed in that game almost never involve the head. So he created a study to reinforce that behavior. Your thought is, if they learn it without the pads, yep. rugby style, yep. they won't do it as much during the game. We hope that it will carry over. It eliminates one player from basically turning their body into a projectile to blow somebody up. Hit. Known as hut or helmetless tackle training, Swartz uses the University of New Hampshire Wildcats as his test recruits. Hit. And he says there's some early evidence it's working. We've been able to identify that some of them actually decrease in the number of impacts per exposure. Eager to help younger players, Swartz approached a nearby high school and enrolled their team in his two-year study. Wired with hit-detecting monitors, they also practice tackling without helmets and pads. Shimmy step. UNH researchers All counting shoulders. more than 50,000 head impacts this season. How many times can a high school player face contact in a game? I mean, they can receive 30, maybe 40 mm -hmm. impacts to the head in a single game. Swartz's work, catching the eye of GE, Under Armour, and yes, the NFL, all co-sponsors of his study. I understand that there is a level of scrutiny and skepticism. I get that. That was just one of the opportunities that was available that we pursued. These studies coming at a time when the numbers of high school football players are decreasing. Last season, there was nearly 10,000 fewer high schoolers playing the game than the previous season. Still, football is by far the most popular team sport in high school. You turned on the lights and gave their biggest boogeyman a name. Dr. Julian Bales, played by Alec Baldwin in the upcoming movie Concussion, is a neurosurgeon and one of the leading researchers on traumatic brain injuries. Sensors, smart helmets, having numbers of hits, having a, a weekly or a seasonal tally is all important. Hopefully technology is going to help be a big part of solving this concussion issue in sports. But many agree nothing can eliminate the risk of taking a big hit on the field. Do you worry about facing one of these life-threatening injuries on the field? It's in the back of your head. If you get hit, you might think, that could be something, but you just have to keep playing. For Nightline, I'm Ryan Smith in Pittsburgh, North Carolina.